Okay, so uh, we've seen um, how to detect safe states if uh, we have only one uh, type of resource. Now, a banker's algorithm is um, is a very uh, important algorithm to uh, detect whether a state is safe or not when we have uh, multiple types of resources, not just multiple instances, but uh, multiple types of resources. Um, why it's called banker's algorithm is because uh, it's usually used in uh, banks uh, uh, modified form of this algorithm is used to uh, decide whether or not we can give a loan uh, to a person now there are a lot of different types of loans there's not this financial loan there is assets and other kind of things uh, and there are a lot of different uses so the bank uh, has to decide that if across different branches uh, multiple people come simultaneously together and ask for a loan is the bank able to give them such a loan because the bank uh, can end up in a deadlock if uh, people uh, want to uh, you know uh, withdraw their savings but the bank has already given the loan to somebody else now it's a very classic example of uh, financial systems where uh, operating systems concepts are basically used because if banks are in a deadlock it results in a condition called um, a bank rush you can read about that anyway uh, coming back to a banker's algorithm uh, so we we assume that uh, there's going to be multiple instances of resources uh, each uh, process claims uh, maximum resource needs a priority what this means is that uh, if a process uh, claims the maximum number of resources that it can take that uh, has priority because once a process gets the maximum number of resources we are sure that at one point of time or the other it's uh, going to terminate itself okay because once the process has taken the maximum resources it can it cannot take any more resources right um, and uh, what we do is when when a process uh, requests a particular resource uh, so we will check if uh, giving that resource to that process will lead us to a safe or unsafe state and if it leads to a safe state we allocate it if it does not lead to a safe state if it leads to an unsafe state then we make that process um, wait okay uh, so uh, here's what the data structures that we require to uh, you know work with the bankers algorithm uh, we consider that we have say m number of processes uh, let's just say uh, the number of processes is uh, three uh, number of resources let's just assume to be four m okay uh, so we would have a vector of uh, length m uh, called available now the available vector would be like this uh, it would uh, be somewhat like this you know resource one resource two uh, resource three and resource uh, four so let's assume that uh, you know uh, total system resources are uh, six uh, of resource type one uh, maybe uh, five of resource type three, seven of resource type three, uh, maybe six of resource type four. Okay, uh, so these are uh, the available resources of each type. Uh, R one could be disk drives, R two could be memory space, R three could be number of uh, input devices. Okay, uh, but there are seven input devices, five memory spaces, six disk drives like that. Okay, uh, if a process wants a disk drive, it can get any one of these uh, six. Okay, like that. Uh, so these are this is the availability uh, matrix uh, the second thing that we uh, discuss is the max matrix the max matrix looks like this uh, it's uh, going to have uh, you know r1 r2 and it's going to have uh, rows uh, p1 p2 and p3 okay uh, so uh, if process one can uh, at uh, the most uh, get access to uh, say 4 r1 resources 2 r2 1 r3 and 4 r4 so that's the uh, you can say uh, max uh, resources that process one can take um, right uh, so there's an example on uh, wikipedia on uh, how the banker's algorithm works so what i'll do is i will fill the values from there because you can read up about it on Wikipedia and you'll be able to relate it when you watch this video so uh, let me just fill up this max resource uh, table as uh, which means that process one can add the uh, max take three r1 resources three r2 th two r3 and two r4 resources okay 
um okay it does it uh, there is, it does not mean that uh, it simultaneously takes all of these but we are just going to put the maximum possible values here if at any point of time p1 requires up to 3 r1 resources we put the value of 3 here if at any point of time it requires at most 3 r2 resources we put the value 3 here okay so p1 can never need more than these resources 3 r1 3 r2 2 r3 and 2 r4 is never going to take more than that that's what our max matrix uh, means okay um okay. what does zero mean is that p3 never requires r4 type resources okay now uh, this is called the max matrix um then all we have uh the allocation matrix okay so uh, the allocation matrix is the number of resources that are currently allocated to these processes at a particular state so uh, if at uh, we are talking about you know uh, state uh, s1 at this stage uh, let's say the allocation matrix is uh, going to look like this you know um, so let's say p1 p2 three so right now maybe they allocated uh, now first thing uh, is this allocation matrix valid or not that's something that you need to check uh, it could be you get a question where the allocation matrix is wrongly given to you now remember that the sum of this uh, these numbers uh, should uh, be less than six. Okay. Of course, because uh, we cannot allocate more than six R four resources. Similarly, the sum of this should be less than or equal to this, um, and so on. Okay. So the sum of the R four column, the R three column, R two and R one column correspondingly, they should be less than the value of max of R four, R three, R two, and R one because we cannot allocate more than what total resources are available okay um, then we get uh, to another matrix called the need matrix okay the need matrix is uh, the difference of the max and allocation matrix uh, so need matrix a need matrix is basically how many resources each process might possibly need in future okay so uh, it's going to be like this. So the need for P1 uh, is of course uh, going to be uh, two, that's like three minus one. Um, okay. Uh, so, So yeah, right. Um, so need matrix uh, two, uh, then uh, three uh, minus two is going to be one, uh, two minus two zero, and uh, two minus uh, one one. Okay, so that's uh, the need uh, for P one. Uh, the need for uh, P two is going to be this and the need for p3 is going to be 0 uh, 1 uh, 4 0 right uh, that's the need matrix now uh, these are the data structures that we uh, need uh, to deal with uh, the bankers algorithm the availability vector uh, the max matrix the allocation matrix the need one we can calculate out of the max and allocation matrix okay now uh, here's the bankers algorithm safety method it says uh, that you know you pick up uh, work and finish uh, take work equal to available uh, right finish i equal to false for i 0 to n minus 1 and we try to find an i such that finish equal to false and need less than work um, uh, you know just read uh, these lines uh, and this would make sense to you mathematically uh, let's just uh, see in practice what this means it means that we need to find out a particular order in which uh, if we let these processes uh, take place like can we at this current state allow p1 to take all the maximum resources 
finish itself then we allow p3 to take all its maximum resources and finish itself and then we allow p2 to take all its maximum resources and finish itself if any such path exists it could be 1 3 2 2 1 3 1 2 3 whatever if even a single such path exists via which we can give the maximum resources to each process one by one and allow them to finish and we are able to you know let all the processes finish if there is even one such way then we call this as a safe state because then we would be able to exit the state without a deadlock so uh, we will, we will uh, what we'll do is we will uh, see if uh, we can allocate uh, p1 with whatever it needs um, okay um, we will add the need row of p1 into the allocated row of p1 okay so we will uh, take this and uh, we are going to bring it here and add it okay um, add it to this row uh, so the new values would uh, be you know three um three two would remain two and this would become two okay the first thing that we see in this uh, state is uh, whether the sum remains less than available or not and the sum here is uh, five uh, five uh, six and uh, five now this should be less than this value here because otherwise uh, it is not even possible to allocate these number of resources so the first thing that we check is uh, you know is it uh, possible to take the need row the ith row so i equal to one for my case uh, so if i can take the ith row i'm counting from one here not from zero like uh, other computer science stuff i'm counting from one here like normal mathematics so if i take i equal to uh, one and the first uh, uh, you know uh, I throw if I can take and add it into the I throw of allocated if it is possible that means that uh, the first process that I am allowing to you know go towards max state is p1 and then I'm gonna let p1 to finish so once p1 finishes executing p1 will uh, free all its uh, you know uh, all the resources that it was holding so we would end up with uh, this thing uh, zero 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 here right um, once that happens uh, all uh, many of our resources are free now now let's see if uh, we can you know uh, allow uh, p2 to execute uh, after this uh, so we'll take this and add it into this place so what will happen is uh, one two three four that's the new state and again you can see the sum uh, is uh, 4, uh, 4, 4 and 2 and this is fine. I mean this is less than this amount here. Okay. So it's uh, fine if I allow this uh, state to continue. Then uh, P2 uh, gets all the maximum resources that it needs and after it gets all the maximum resources that it needs, we have already assumed that once a process gets the maximum resources, it's going to end at some point or the other. So uh, then uh, P2 would end, right? Uh, which would uh, bring us to the situation uh, where right? And after that, uh, we can see we can allocate uh, these values uh, to P3 and then P3 would end. So in this order, we can allow uh, the resources uh, to uh, be used and be ended. Now, as an exercise, you can try, you can see if I tried to run P3 first and then P1 and then P2, uh, is it possible to run in this order? You will see that it's not possible to run in this order, but this order uh, here, uh, this order is perfectly possible. Okay. Uh, so at least one order should exist in which we can run the processes and allow our system to exit out of the devlog. Okay, um, in the initial condition that my allocation matrix was in, uh, so we have proven that the current uh, state is a safe state, right? Uh, now in the 
original allocation matrix which had uh, i think the values were somewhat like this uh, one uh, one and uh, one zero uh, three three right so uh, instead of uh, this if originally the situation uh, was this this look at this value of two as i have just changed the state now if the original state was somewhat like this and you still see that uh, you know uh, or maybe uh, you know uh, let's uh, Okay, so in this state, uh, this is not a safe state uh, because please, uh, you can try and find out if there is a way we can uh, run processes and exit out of the state. You will find that this uh, state is not uh, safe anymore, right? Uh, so uh, how do we find out whether a safe a state is safe or not? Uh, now the theoretical way is this: we take work and finish as vectors of length m and n respectively okay uh, so m is the length of uh, you know what's uh, the value of m m is the number of resources and n is the number of processes okay so uh, we had assumed like n uh, being uh, 3 and m being 4 okay so we need this uh, work vector of uh, length m right uh, so the work vector would look like this and uh, there would be a um, um, finish vector of length n okay um, So uh, what we need basically is uh, we write work equal to available and uh, finish i equal to false for i equal to 0 and n minus 1. Uh, we need to find a particular i for which uh, finish i is false and need i is less than work. Uh, if no such thing exists, uh, we go to uh, step 4 which is a finish i equal to true uh, for all i in the system is in a safe state. And uh, otherwise, if uh, such an i does exist, in that case we go to step three step three is work equal to work plus allocation okay so it's basically the same process that we did here we need to uh, get a uh, pick up a work vector from here put it into the allocated vector uh, add the sum and after creating the sum uh, we need to see if each of these uh, columns the sum is you know less than uh, these values or not right uh, because otherwise it's not possible to allocate uh, once we have done that uh, we remove that row we make it zero because the process once it gets the maximum resources it can finish itself uh, then we keep on doing this uh, for every i till we find out a particular order in which the all the processes can get to the maximum value and then finally finish themselves okay so that's what the banker's uh, algorithm is uh, all about 